Brian's gonna tie one or two of these flies for us. Fishing up there 11 years. 11 years. 11 years. So by now he knows what works, he knows his bugs, and he can't be bugged about any other bugs, but these bugs. Perfect. Great. Okay, so what we're gonna tie now is this guy. Here's a chewed example. And you'll see part of the reason why I do one of the things I'm gonna do now. See the body on that. The body's coming undone off the fly. So this was a, a previous method that I used to make to make the body. I'm now using something else, which we'll go through now. Just adds a bit more security to the fly. This is a rab or a variant of a rab, and a rab is essentially a pattern developed down in the Western Cape streams by an angler called Tony Biggs. And rab, depending on which side of the fence you you stand, either either stands for rough and buoyant because it's quite a big fluffy fly or the original version was or because it's tied with red thread and has a red bum it's called a red arsed bastard okay so again what you want is a is a proper thread thread underbody on the on the hook shank you always want a proper thread body so your materials don't slip and your materials don't move now one of the variants I do on this on this style of fly is I add a, a bum to it. It can be anything, some people call it legs, some people call it the, the emerging shuck of the, of, the, of the beast as he's sitting in the, in the surface. And essentially what this is, incredibly thin hair, spandex, latex, this stuff stretches for nothing. Super, super, super strong. Um, so it works really well for very fine legs and a shuck in this case, case on the fly. And you need very little of this stuff. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it onto the bum of the fly. The simplest way of doing that is just to, to fold it around the thread and then just slide it down to where you want it to be. And then you simply secure it in to the bum. And then it will, there your, there your, your tails are standing in there. Now what you want to do is you want to add quite a bit of red thread there. So we're going to add the red bum. Again, a lot of guys say the red is the is the trigger for the fish. I quite frankly don't think the fish is even going to bother to see that. But we've got our nice big red bum there now. As a security on the on the fly, what I do is I use a very 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 fine wire um, to secure essentially a peacock hole. What you want to do is you want to add the wire in first before we add the body because it's going to cover the body and it's basically going to secure the peacock hole down again very very fine stuff because it is a dry fly the fly needs to float so using wire on a on a dry fly may be a bit counterintuitive but it is it's super super thin stuff it really doesn't add a lot of weight onto the fly so again you just want to tie it down make it part of the part of the hook shank as it were and bring the thread back down to where the start of the bum is. I'm going to use a peacock hole to create the body. Now these are well-worn peacock holes. And these are the these are from the discarded feathers that you find on the ground afterwards. So normally you'll find that these holes are very very bushy. These ones are well worn down because of from the peacock dragging his tail. Um, but what it does is it, there's just a little bit of fluff left on it, and I think that little bit of fluff just adds a little bit of life like for the bug's body. And that's essentially what we what we're trying to trying to emulate here, rather than just like a, a flat a flat piece of vinyl or a flat piece of piece of lifeless material. It's got a little bit of fur onto it, which gives that little bit of lifeness. So again, we're going to tie that in right at the back, at the base of the hook there, just above the red bum. Secure it and take the thread all the way around to the head. And then essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap that body all around you so you can see if you've got that close up you can see the hair just standing up and almost creating like a little bit of segments for the fly the peacock curl actually has a very nice natural color to it as well it's got a dark side and a light side so if you do like a really big or, or a really close close up to these flies which a lot of guys do in the in the fly tying forums you can see it's actually got a very nice natural color to it 
again whether the fish actually see it I don't know but it looks it really 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 looks nice and then what I'm going to do is take the wire and just wrap that over the body and you can see it just gives that adds just another just a very slight level of segmentation to the fly gives a little bit of glisten glitter to it again just makes the animal just a little bit more lifelike strap that down and then normally what we do is we helicopter this off so pull it off like this but this is a stainless steel wire the next material to make the fluffy bit on the on the head of the fly is squirrel tail so essentially what we want here is we just want really about eight to ten fibers strip out the short ones we want the slightly longer ones and again what you've got is you've got a very nice white tip on the on that hair and under a nice bright sunshiny day you can see them again they again they act as a sighter although my main sighter is going to be a hot pink post I find the hot pink works really well so what we're going to do is, do is we're going to add the hair so it's facing forward over the front of the hook eye and form a flat base of material trim off the excess so now these hairs will just extend the size size or the footprint of the fly for a dry fly I think I think what really works for fish is because they are looking up and they and they see the animal sitting on the on the surface of the water is the size of the footprint so so if you can get a dry fly that's got that's small in size but creates a large a large footprint there's no fish that's going to refuse it you'll just see that as a meal you'll see a nice big footprint on it I say oh that's something worthwhile coming up off the bottom for and eating what these hairs do once they've been preened out is they generally just increase the size of the footprint of the fly because the fly, fly, fly's footprint, or it's basically only held up by, by a parachute or dry fly hackle. First the post of Antron material. What I said I use is a, is a hot pink. And really is just so easy to see. Your standard traditional, well, commercial flies are all tied generally with white posts. The argument there being is that the white is meant to imitate of the, of the emerging bug. The wings are standing up and well, you don't have pink wings in a bug, but you have white wings. So the commercials all tie them in, in white. The downside of that is that under very bright light and or if the fly goes into a section of white water, you can't see that because the white is, white is lost against the white water or the bright brightness of the, of the water reflection. So I like to use different color posts, chartreuse, very nice lime green or a hot orange, but the pink for me is by far and away I can see it. To mount the post, we just put the, put the material, fold the material around the around the thread pretty much even slide it down to where we want to secure the thre thread give it one or two wraps and it will stay there what I want to do now is I want to do a figure of eight so that will then just secure it even better because it's split what we want is a single post so now I've got to bring those two pieces together and do do some circular consecutive wraps around it to build a post that I can work with and which will keep the material standing up. So again, slightly tricky, but if you pull it to one hand, get the hair out of there, pull the post together. And then essentially what you're gonna do is I'm gonna bring the thread over and then use the fingers of my other hand to grab the bobbin. Wrap it around the post and bring it around. A short thread works much better for that. So around and around couple of wraps and then down and you'll see your post is starting to form and then what I'll do a couple around the base again and then essentially it's it's pretty much tied now so now we just give it a couple of extra securing wraps and down and one down Okay, three quarters of the way finished with the fly. The last thing, last thing to add is just to add the parachute. So the parachute is essentially a feather, which is then tied, tied, tied in horizontally. Well, tied in vertically first, folded down horizontally, and then wrapped around that post to make a dinner plate around. And that, and that basically creates the footprint where the where the fly is sitting sitting on the water. And so again, my comment about the footprints: I like to generally oversize my my parachutes a bit. 
so they are a little bit larger than what you would normally commercially call for so again see I've tied quite a few so I've got a couple of uh, I've got a vacant patch here in my in my dry fly so that's too big what you're gonna do is you wanna that one looks fine from there so now what we're going to do the aim here is to take that feather and then wrap it around the post like that so we get a so we get that parachute okay so essentially what we've got here now so about three quarters of the way down strip off the bottom so we just get a little bit of bare bare shank of the of the feather there are two sides to a feather always you have the top side which is generally darker and is a bit of a shiny shiny surface to it and then you have the dull side dull side is light in color so the feather normally lies like that on the bird what we want here is the feather feather also has a natural curve um, sometimes a bit difficult to see but in terms of this feather it's it's curved like that around the around the stem so what we want is that when the parachute sits on the on the on the surface of the water we actually want that cup so those those points they stick up onto the water surface so, so they don't penetrate in the water surface and break that surface tension so that will come then from having the feather upside down when we when we wrap it around so we wrap it in always with a shiny side towards you and then when we fold it down we we'll, we wrap it around so it gets the gets the points up for the parachute wrap continue wrapping the feather around the post so that it becomes a part of the post and take it back down and trim off the excess stem piece okay so now we've got the feather tied in and then when we pull it down and we wrap it we'll have the we will have the um, the non shiny side up which will make those pieces or the or the fingertip stand up and it will create the saucer that the that the fly is going to ride on the last thing that we want to add is a little bit of a thorax so your bug bug essentially has a bit of a chest piece and essentially what that does is just give the fly a little bit of a little bit of life to it um, I normally use a dubbing but other but can use peacock hole also for that so I get a nice one that's got a little bit of fluff to it so it just creates a bit of contrast I'll tie that in and then I'm just going to give like a couple of figure of eight wraps around the body and tie it off So that gives the fly a bit of a thorax. Now we're ready for the for the parachute. So we take that feather, we bend it down 90 degrees and holding the parachute the, or holding the post, wrap the parachute down towards the body of the fly. Probably about four or five wraps or so. And then bring the thread up and capture the that feather tip around the post two or three wraps there and then the parachute will stay in place trim off the excess and then we need to whip finish it so bring everything up bring the thread to behind the hook eye capture it behind the hook eye a couple of wraps and then the whip finish behind the hook eye and the second one for safety and security and trim it and now you can see in combination with the with the parachute and the preened out squirrel tail fibers Peacock 
looking out there. It's a clean thorax. Got a very nice large footprint fly which is going to bring a fish up from the surface. What you want to do now is just trim the post down because essentially all you need is that little spot of color just to see the fly as the sighter and there's your Pararab emerger. Thank you.